SpaceX prepares for more Starship Super Heavy static fires. Dragon is on its way home. 53 more Starlink satellites are ready for liftoff. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX had a busy week last week, lighting up static fire after static fire. But this week, the sun was the only thing bringing the heat. Well, that and welding equipment. All planned road closures for the area were canceled as the company continues preparing to pick things up where they left off next week. After our Friday episode, Booster 7 was moved from the launch site to the Mega Bay for the installation of its Center 13 Raptor 2 engines. Elon shared a quick clip of the installation later that night. Meanwhile, at the launch site, Stage 0 continues to undergo modifications as well, like the chopsticks receiving actuators in anticipation for catching super heavy boosters. There isn't even a publicly available date set yet for Starship's first orbital flight, but still, the vehicle has just won its first commercial customer. SkyPerfect JSAT is Asia's largest satellite operator and Japan's only provider of both multi-channel pay TV broadcasting and satellite communication services. The company has selected Starship to deliver its Superbird 9 comm satellite, built by Airbus, to geosynchronous transfer orbit in 2024. And I know what you're thinking. It must be one hefty satellite, but do keep in mind Starship is expected to be much cheaper for customers since it's 100% reusable. In other news, SpaceX is looking to increase their West Coast launch cadence and therefore is hiring skilled technicians, or at least malleable folk they can train not to break things. If that's you and you're interested, you can visit Falcon 9 Operations Manager Steve's LinkedIn page. After a 24-hour delay due to expected precipitation at the splashdown sites, the Cargo Dragon capsule for CRS-25 undocked from the space station just moments ago. The spacecraft will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and make a parachute-assisted splashdown on Saturday, that's tomorrow, but NASA TV will not be broadcasting it, because they're a bunch of shoot haters, brah. However, SpaceX will be broadcasting their next Starlink mission, which will take place just hours from now at 3.21 p.m. Eastern Time, so long as the weather cooperates. A Falcon 9 carrying 53 Starlink satellites will lift off from Slick 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and deliver them to the fourth orbital shell. I'll be covering it live on Rumble to support alternative pro-freedom platforms, so check out the link below to subscribe and join us. But first, a word from our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. Good news, Biden recently said that inflation for July was zero. Zero? Zero. Bad news, inflation for July was actually 8.5%. And just days ago, Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act that Dems got through the House and Senate. But unfortunately, 230 economists and any honest person with common sense understands this so-called Reduction Act will actually increase inflation. But hey, at least you, Mr. and Mrs. Middle Class, are much more likely to be audited by the IRS next year. And I don't have to tell you that having less money in your bank account makes goods more affordable. Concerning food prices, well, as expected, they went up in the month of July, as they have every month since I started telling you about my Patriot Supply. If you purchased a kit from us a year ago, you now own food that is on average 13.1% cheaper to eat than what's currently available at your local grocery store. Visit preparewithspace.com and invest in a little peace of mind with an emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Each kit contains a variety of meals, drinks, and snacks that last for 25 years. I just checked the website this morning and you can still save $250 off a three month emergency food kit and $50 off a one month food kit, but I thought those deals were supposed to end last night. They could literally expire at any moment. So that would put it at about 250 per meal. You know, these days a fast food meal at the drive-thru will cost you easily three times that. So be sure to check out preparewithspace.com before it's too late. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. NASA's Space Launch System, also known as the SLS rocket, completed its third and possibly final trip to its launch pad on Wednesday for Artemis 1. It took the expendable super heavy lift vehicle, along with its attached Orion spacecraft, the entirety of Tuesday night and Wednesday morning to make the four mile trip to pad 39B going one mile per hour. That crawler, by the way, like the rocket, is not electric. It runs on two giant diesel engines, but shh, NASA prefers the term large electrical power generator engines. SLS is booked to launch during a two hour window that opens at 8.33 a.m. Eastern on August 29th for this first opportunity. If it does indeed launch at this time, it will spend 42 days taking a couple of crash test dummies and scientific instruments to lunar orbit and back. More than 100,000 visitors are expected to be there to crowd the Florida coast and pet the alligators. Crikey! Well, that's it for today. Appreciate you stopping by. Thank you members for membering, subscribers for subscribing, and likers for liking. If you also want to comment below for the algorithm and share this video, I promise I won't stop you. Regardless, have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.